when I first implemented this procedure, my indications uh, for this type of surgery was osteonecrosis of the femoral head in conjunction with an intraarticular pathology that's addressable by hip arthroscopy, which includes loose body, labral tears, femoral acetabular impingement, ligamentum teres rupture, chondral lesions, instability, snapping hip, um, and extraarticular disorders as well as where, uh, including peritrochanteric disorders of greater trochanteric bursitis and gluteus medius tears. <laughs> Initially, this procedure was designed to address incidental and concurrent avascular necro necrosis lesions in patients who had hip pain and arthroscopically addressable pathologies such as FAI and labral tears. However, uh, I feel that this procedure is also very useful uh, for isolated avascular necrosis of the femoral head. The advantages of, a hip, um, of an arthroscopically assisted hip procedure is that you can diagnose and treat concurrent pathology of the hip, especially if the patients present with pain. We know that MRIs have poor predictive, uh, positive predictive value as far as diagnosing conjugal lamination associated with FAI. You can confirm that the head is not penetrated by a core decompression reaming with direct visualization with, with the arthroscope. You can also insert the scope into the core decompression tunnel to visualize the necrotic AVN lesion. And you have precise staging of the avascular necrosis. You can detect early chondral collapse and damage when you look at it arthroscopically. So avascular necrosis or aseptic necrosis of the femoral head typically occurs in patients between 20 and 50 years. The mean is 38 years. It's the same age presentation as femoral acetabular impingement. It's a disease of impaired osseous blood flow. It could be traumatic when you have a displaced femoral neck fracture or hip dislocation. And also non-traumatic, um, uh, there is an associate with steroids, alcohol abuse, sickle cell anemia, et cetera. The pathophysiology that's most commonly accepted, uh, the femoral head microcirculation is occluded by intravascular thrombi. There's an extravascular compression. Osteonecrosis or bone death occurs after ischemia. In the repair process, the dead bone is replaced with new bone. That's called creeping substitution. But the repair is not complete in large lesions. The dead bone fractures. It collapses. That's what produces a crescent sign on x-rays. The femoral head eventually flattens, causes increased stress on the cartilage, and eventual degenerative joint disease. There are various staging systems. One is described by Ficot and Arlet. I highlighted in red the important stage one and stage two. That means this is pre-collapse of the femoral head, and this is usually when femoral head core decompression is indicated. University of Pennsylvania staging had six stages, uh, stage six being the most advanced. I also highlighted in red stages zero to two, which is pre-collapse stages when it, once again core decompression may be indicated. How do we di diagnose avascular necrosis? Um, history, it's typically an atraumatic hip pain. You want to look for associated risk factors in the history, such as steroid use. Physical exam, you may find groin pain, positive impingement test, decreased range of motion. There may be some clicking in the hip, especially if there's a collapsed necrotic fragment. You want to check for bilaterality of symptoms uh, in 40 to 80 percent of cases. Uh, avascular necrosis occurs in both hips. And if there's no associated risk factors for AVN, the pre presentation may actually be identical to that of femoral acetabular impingement and labral tears. So the indications, you may have a patient with hip or groin pain, plus or minus mechanical symptoms. symptoms. You have findings of FAI on x-rays with cam and pincer spurs. Uh, your MRI may show a labral tear, cartilage delamination with pre-collapse osteonecrosis of the hip. The osteonecrosis must be pre-collapsed for core decompression to work which means there must be no crescent sign. The osteonecrosis is likely silent and asymptomatic because it's early. And the contralateral hip may have the same early stage AVN and may be asymptomatic. The FAI and labral tears in these situations tend to be what the symptomatic uh, pain comes from. And the early AV AVN may be clinically silent. First case, uh, I have a 30-year-old male with nine months of left hip pain after a twisting injury while skiing. On physical exam, he had pain in his groin with a positive impingement, positive favor test. He had no prior pain and no pain in the contralateral hip. Activity modification of physical therapy led to no improvement. These are his AP x-rays. These are done lateral x-rays, 45 degree done x-rays. This is an MRI of his hip showing a avascular necrosis lesion of the femoral head and also a lesion of the labrum uh, with a labral tear. This is a sagittal slice showing an anterior uh, location of the avascular necrosis. Patient underwent a diagnostic left hip injection and the pain resolved. Bilateral hip AVN uh, was diagnosed on MRI. Uh, patient had acute left hip pain after skiing with a labral tear and x-ray findings of FAI. 
the contralateral right hip where the patient had silent AVN was asymptomatic and not painful. So therefore, the patient underwent left hip arthroscopic surgery with labral repair, cam and pincer resection, and concurrent core decompression. And you can see the post-op x-rays with the core decompression tract on the left hip. The second case is a 40-year-old male who developed right hip pain from running. Symptoms persisted despite 12 months of non-operative treatment. MRI showed a right lateral tear with bilateral AVN. The contralateral left hip was clinically silent, no pain. He improved with a diagnostic injection on the right hip. He had an impingement sign and favor test on physical exam. These are his AP x-rays and done 45 degree x-rays where you see a vascular necrosis. Patient underwent right hip arthroscopic labral repair with pincer resection and cord decompression. Six months later, patient underwent left hip diagnostic arthroscopy or cord decompression despite being asymptomatic to prevent the progression of AVN. There's no labral tearing on the left hip. These are his post-op x-rays demonstrating the core decompression tract. So why, why do we need to decompress an asymptomatic avascular necrosis of the hip? Mont and JBJS in 2010 uh, looked at 16 studies where he found 664 asymptomatic hips with AVN. Of those hips, 59% or 394 hips progressed to symptoms or collapse. Small or medial lesions collapse less than 10% of the time. Um, Recommended treating lesions that involve lateral two-thirds of the weight-bearing femoral head and occupy greater than 25% of the femoral head. So the results of core decompression are good. Uh, the goals are to decompress uh, the intraosseous pressure to restore normal vascular flow and alleviate pain. Been a uh, randomized trial including Stolberg, which showed 70% success in non-collapsed lesions. Mont did a review in 90, 1996 of 42 studies and 1,200 hip core, core decompressions. 71% had good results. So to conclude, does core decompression change the natural history of avascular necrosis of the hip? There are too many differences among studies to determine the true success rate of core de decompression. Do, does adding biologics, OP1, growth factors, bone marrow aspirate, uh, et cetera, improve clinical results? It remains to be seen. However, there is a trend uh, for uh, uh, success, especially in clinical uh, tests as well as in laboratory tests uh, for success as far as cartilage healing and bone healing. Core decompression is effective for pre-collapsed osteonecrosis of the hip, and untreated asymptomatic avascular necrosis of the hip can progress to symptomatic avascular necrosis. So all but the smallest AVN lesion should be treated regardless of symptoms. Patients with AVN and FAI are similar in age of presentation, bilaterali bilaterality, exam, and symptoms. And AVN and FAI or labral tears can be simultaneously treated with hip arthroscopy. Concerns for the future, will traction as associated with hip arthroscopy have any adverse effect on the core decompression? And this will be further elucidated by clinical outcome studies in the future.